Welcome to One ABQ and You, Conversations, Culture, and Community, a City of Albuquerque production with your hosts, Mayor Tim Keller and me, Leah Black. Hi there, I'm Stacy Drengmeister, filling in today for Leah Black. Mayor, thanks for having me join you today. Yeah, it's so fun to have you here again. And uh, also, you know, we're going to be able to talk about music. So tell us about your last show that you might have gone to. I think my last show went to Thundercat and it was last year. So it's been a while I'm due for a show, but awesome show, stage set design, super rad. His set was super rad, went with a bunch of people from the office. So it was an incredible time. How about you? Well, I just have to, because Thundercats is my era. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, I really love Thundercats. The, no, they have the coolest the bad guy. No, no, so I'm getting to my question. <laughs> okay, okay. I just want to give shout outs, because like the bad guy in the cartoon Thundercats is like the coolest evil cartoon character ever. Anyway, uh, but tell us what the band Thundercat is. So Thundercat is like, I don't know, neo-funk bassist, Love super it. kind of psychedelic cool, but he has a giant thundercat that looks like an evil character, so I don't know. I think he's <laughs> probably inspired by it, not sure. I gotta check this out. <laughs> I love it. So our next guest is uh, just a local institution, uh, been with a bunch of bands for like 20 years, does some festivals and things like that. And so we're going to talk local music, which we actually haven't done too much of on this show, uh, which is very cool. But also, you know, a New Mexico story. He's from rural New Mexico, but, um, you know, is a city in uh, urban core in a rural area. You know, you also tend to find like a lot of the music, that sort of melting pot aspect like generates music. And also you just need a certain volume to like sell tickets to support your musical career. So it's also a great story of like the confluence of how Albuquerque also kind of provides uh, that diverse musical experience for all of New Mexico. Love it. But before we get to, I have to ask you one question because I'm curious. You always just been a music fan or did you ever dabble and have a band or any musical endeavors yourself? So I tried once uh, with a high school band to have to do anything, guitar, sing, drum. Um, and in like once it was like Saturday afternoon garage it was actually a basement. And like there's like you're terrible. I mean, I feel like <laughs> there was nothing there I could build on. So ever since then, I've been a devout fan, similar to art. Appreciate, love, no talent. So nothing, that's just where I am on, on the spectrum here. Nothing wrong with that. Thanks for humoring me. And we'll get right to our guest. All right, well, we're back today with Roman Barham. He's a local drummer for Red Mesa, pillar in the local music community, has been promoting bands for over 25 years. So welcome to the show, Roman. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we should, uh, there's there's so much we want to cover with you, and it's uh, been awesome even for me because I knew about a couple of your bands even before this job, especially Red Mesa. Mm -hmm. And um, But, you know, tell us maybe, if you don't mind, like, you know, kind of in reverse, let's start with just like right now, like how would you describe the scene, the music scene in Albuquerque? Well, what's really cool is, um, you know, I've, I've seen the, the scene over, uh, over like generation stuff, that, you know, and it fluctuates, it comes full circle. And this this year and last year, um, well, really after COVID, it's come back like a full force. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. All genres of music, like from uh, the DIY scene, punk, metal, um, a lot of new bands popping up, a lot of new musicians, a lot of kids that I've seen go to shows when they're young are now older and with uh, instruments in their hands. So it's great to see it come back full circle and everyone just motivated about music and going out to shows and supporting the scene all from all all genres it's amazing mm, so that's i'm excited yeah well you're talking about you know seeing that next generation come up i would love to hear how you got your start in music or where you really grew into this passion yeah well um it was wild because uh i'm not from albuquerque originally i was from a smaller town uh south mountain air Oh, so yeah. me and my friends, um, there wasn't much to do out there. We, we worked, but when we would get back uh, from work, we'd just jam for hours. And um, eventually we we became friends with like bands from Berlin, like To Tell Us Die, Minus Seven. And then we became friends with them and we played shows there. We just like leveled up to Albuquerque. And then eventually we just started playing shows around Albuquerque and just met 
people throughout the scene and we ended up playing house parties, bars, and just from there it just bloomed and now it's 20 some years later, it's, it's, still, it's still the same kind of, but a lot of the friends, they grow up and they have families, but the new generations, they, they keep you young again to a certain sense. But some shows I do feel old. <laughs> and that's that's worth saying because I never thought I was going to be like an old guy at the show. Yeah, yeah. I do too, for what it's worth. I'm like, I'm the oldest guy here. Uh, I'll just tell you a quick story. This was a while ago before they were as big as they are now, but I went to a Five Finger Death Punch show at like Rio Rancho. This was probably like 10 years ago. And so I was, you know, 10 years ago, I was like maybe 35. And it was like in that era, they were like a teenager band. I mean, I was actually like taller than everyone too. Like I like, stuck out in the crowd. They were all like 16, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, it's, it's so, wild. Was, like, it was the oldest I've ever felt. It was a five finger. Or show like if you're in the mosh pit, and you're like, "Oh, whoa!" I'm kind of dominating the mosh pit, but I'm like, "Oh, look around!" I'm like, "Oh yeah, okay, I might, I might as well, <laughs> I might as well yeah. stop." <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. But um, so yeah, tell us about then. So so first off, Mountain Air. You've got the Schaefer. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Love that hotel. Just shout outs to Mountain Air. Um, and uh, it's haunted too, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. That's, that place is pretty spooky. Yeah. I feel like that was some good inspiration for some dark music. Yeah. Well, there's um, yeah, there's a lot of cool like abandoned like buildings around that area too, but the Schaefer is really cool because uh, there's a big history. And then uh, me and my friend Juanito, we, um, which was in a band with me, we lived right across the street from it. It was pretty crazy. But we used to remodel it. Like uh, in the upstairs, we remodeled oh, yeah. a lot of the rooms and we would work late nights and we would hear voices for sure. But like um, very like up close footsteps, like shuffling and weird stuff like that. But at one point we were just like, oh, it's normal. But there was a few times it was like pretty freaky. Mm -hmm. Like you didn't feel like like well. <laughs> That's, That's what happened cool. in New Mexico. Such deep roots here. There's lots yeah. of history and hundreds some of years. Funky things oh, that yeah, can thousands happen. of years. It's crazy. I'd love, I'd love to hear about. You know, I have never been like the most involved in the music scene, but it's such a welcoming community. Would love to hear about just some of the venues you've played at. If mm -hmm. you have any favorites or kind of the different flavors that each venue has to offer. Cool. Yeah, there's so many venues from back then to now. Like um, I do worked at the launch pad now for like 14 15 years but like um the moonlight lounge there's so, there's so many really cool after parties and shows from the past that happened there like when speed one when he did a lot of hip-hop shows there's so many hip-hop artists from now that are huge that played in the moonlight mm. and like um the sunshine theater is always great the l ray um the old birds we we're talking about the birds tiki lounge and uh atomic cantina Mm. And um, you know, like Sister Bar, we love playing there too. And um, and there's there's so many. And then Revel now. So there's venues popping up o over everywhere. And it's nice to see venues outside of downtown popping up because there's so many people outside of downtown that mm -hmm. need a place to, to go that's like kind of down the street or just like a mile away. So it's cool to see venues um, outside of downtown. It's yeah, growing. it's good to see if people that are don't know too. Like it's like there, it, it's cool because like each venue has its own sort of flavor. So you mm -hmm. get downtown, you get that. It's the only place really in the whole state where you get this like urban feel. Yeah. And then at night, yeah, it's a little raw and gritty, but like it's also so is the music. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, um, and then you go to some place where you know, uh, like a revel, which is if folks don't know about, it, it's kind of up by uh, like the big um, I twenty five and like all the movie theaters and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And that place is just so like the ease of use because like you don't really have to park and walk and everything, and you can also like get to the bar really easy. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, yeah. like, it's been like as an adult, I'm like, oh, like it didn't take me 30 minutes to get a beer. You yeah, know? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And so, true. but then it's funny because then I appreciate like eat them like as what they are so mm -hmm. when i'm there i'm like oh man like it's cool to be downtown and then the opposite i'm like oh this is nice to kick back and like you know be able to you know have a little space oh exactly so it's really cool that we have more options now and it's, it's nice to see like like the um the rain like the the ranges of the venues because there's bands that are they bring like four thousand it's good to see a venue that they could play here because a lot of the times that will skip our market mm -hmm. so we miss out Huge. on all those tours so it's nice to have every tier of venue now so so we can have all those big tours and not have to go to denver or phoenix and stuff travel yeah so we could just have it right here 
Good stuff. Well, tell us a little bit more going back to you. So you're in Mountain Air and you're eventually coming into Albuquerque and you're learning music. You know, when did you kind of really go like, okay, I got some talent, meaning I'm going to, I'm going to actually play music, you know, um, and you know, not just like in my house or in my garage. Yeah. Oh yeah. Tell us about that journey a little bit. That's a, that was a big step because I, I did have a good job working with the national forces, the forest ranger up in Mount at the Cibola. So, wow. so my mom was just like, oh, you have a career, Hito? And I'm like, just, <laughs> I'm like, well, mom, I, I started a band and we're, we're in a band in Las Lunas. And she was like, okay, so what are you gonna do? I'm like, I'm gonna move to Las Lunas and work here. It's like, okay. So I did that for a while. But then at one point, the band was starting to play shows in Albuquerque and big house shows and we're starting to get more, um, more known. So I was like, you know what, instead of driving all the way to, to Mountain Air again, I'm just gonna live here and stay here so and work here. So I started doing that. My mom was just like, man, you missed out on the opportunity, but I'm like, but I wanna rock and roll all, all day and all night. And uh, so eventually I just moved there and just started working with music, like NRG staging. So I worked a lot behind the scenes and um, met a lot of musicians and stuff and was able to watch them and meet them t at a certain, level to where I'm like, wow, there's normal like us and and they're awesome. So eventually I just um, worked in that a lot more and then eventually started booking and um, just it just gradually got bigger and bigger and I started to know a lot of the p people that influenced me and and from then on I knew was, I was a lifer. So I think um, just, locked in. yeah, locked in. So is your mom so. a fan? Does she come to the shows? Does she come around? And <laughs> like, all right, I, I see why you did this. Yeah, now. you know, actually, um, at first she never really, because she was busy with her work and she lived down by Mount Air, so she never really came out because she used to go to bed at like nine. So, But eventually I started doing these festivals and stuff in the kind of all day, and then she does arts and crafts, so I had vendors at these, at these festivals, so I would put her as a vendor so she would get to like hang out all day. Actually, a lot of the bands would go over there and talk to her and it, would be, it was really cool. And um, my mom saw like what I was doing and what I was saying, what I was doing was becoming a reality. And she was like, wow, you know, that you're really into this and I'm glad that it's expanding like this because a lot of the bands were even uh, like worldwide. There's bands from like Poland and um, Italy and stuff. And she was just like, wow, this is really cool. And then, um, yeah, and here I am now, still wow. doing it. So um, I know you do some producing of like events and festivals, mm -hmm. and I think this is something we always hear a lot like, oh, there's not enough going on in Albuquerque, or where's <laughs> the scene? And I'm like, you know, I don't like you, you, you have to look a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so, but just for folks like, you know, maybe tell us a little bit about, you know, sort of the, you know, on the Mesa stuff and Rock Albuquerque. Oh, yeah. Um, all those things are. It was cool because me and my friend Dano used to always go to festivals like together. We used to go to like Maryland Death Fest, uh, Psycho Las Vegas, Psycho California when it was there. And we met a lot of these people that would go to festivals from all over the world and all over the United States. So all of us just all became friends. And then me and Dano were, would come back home and just be like, man, I wish we were still there. Like, what if we do our own festival? How would we do it? What would we do? And he says, well, since you have the inn and booking, why don't like we do something? I was like, oh, yeah, we just got to find the perfect setting, perfect venue, perfect place, just like something different from the inner city and stuff like that. And uh, he moved to Taos, and eventually he was like, there's a brewery up here that the, with the Earth Ship like venue. Oh, yeah, 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 and it was, it was called like the Mother Ship, but it was like all natural venue, and it had a, a sound to it, too. It would make it like... I don't know, just like you, like unique, and it was in the middle of nowhere, by the gorge. So we we came up with Monolith on the Mesa, and uh, it blew up. Like our first year was good, but the second year got so much hype on it, and like worldwide, like we were getting um, interviewed by Decibel, um, just all these like huge blogs and magazines, and uh, and then COVID happened, and it kind of put a stop still in it. And it, and honestly, like co when COVID happened, uh, Dano got it, and he he passed away through COVID. So it, it put a huge damper in Monoliths per se. But I still continued it because I knew Dano would want me to. So so um, so 
but we did what we wanted to do and it was on a, it it was like on the on the up and it was like crazy but we did it and it was it was pretty epic and uh it's still happening and stuff but it, it's it takes a little bit more work and time and stuff and it's mm-hmm. eventually we'll be back you think you're going to try one this year this year probably not a monolith i'm looking to come back in 2025 hopefully but I want to do another Bootke Rock City this year. Nice. Tell us a little bit about that one. So uh, it was the first one last year, and it was awesome because it was kind of a spillover from Monolith because I didn't quite um, get the venue worked out for Monolith, but it had a sick lineup, which, which uh, like, uh, Matt Pike's band, Pike vs. the Automaton. I had Beelzebong, Weed Eater, like, um, a lot of really good bands. So I was like, you know what? I, I want always want to do something in Albuquerque. And I work at these venues, so I might as well like make a block party thing. And and it, it came together, and I put it on, and um, it was awesome. Um, I worked with Marble too, like Marble did a festival beer. It was pretty cool. Um, eventually, I want to do that one again. I'm still working on the logistics of it to see if I could still do it, because it's it's a lot of time and money and dedication, and you still got to work within that time too, so <laughs> and make money. So it's like. But I, I want to keep on doing it because, I mean, like I said, I'm a lifer and rock and roll is life and I'm ready. Yeah, well, thanks for <laughs> packaging it up for us. Yeah, yeah. I never yeah. made it to Monolith, but I heard about it. And it just sounded so iconic and cool. It was cool. My backstage was cool. Ask Aaron. It was fun <laughs> hanging out with he all these. It was like the best time of life, man, for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, the... shout outs to Metal Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those festivals and big events are a total labor of love, but we yeah, have so time. much great things going on in our community. So thanks to you and people like you in the community Thank that you. bring people together and mm-hmm. celebrate our creativity creativity in the local music yeah, there's scene. so much talent here so much culture with the talent that's what's awesome about you know because um when you go on tour you go to different cities and stuff you see the scene because every scene's kind of different like the new orleans scenes has their their feel and the dallas scene and like you go to portland seattle what's cool about the albuquerque music scene it's 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 long it's been around since the 60s 70s even before that but um the culture here has a big, like, um, has a big influence on the music, mm. from the ranchetas to, to rock and roll to metal to reggae. It's it all fits in, and that's what's really cool that it has an identity. Like Albuquerque's music scene, its identity. Like the, there's people in New York and New Orleans that know about New Mexico music scene, mm. you know, because they've been to shows here. They know like Noisy or Laughing Dog, so it's it's awesome. It's awesome to be a part of that. Lucky to live in Albuquerque. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're really lucky to have you on the show today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for so, joining us. Yeah, and before we wrap up, we should touch base. First, like give us the quick litany just for our listeners of bands that you've played with. Well, um in, in just Albuquerque or like all around now? You can you can go as, long, as big as you want so we can all do uh, our research at home. See, so so Black Maria was a band that I, I played with. That was before me, though, but it was an honor for them to ask me because Black Maria was a big influence on me because mm. they're huge rock and roll, um, huge rock and roll influence on the scene here. And then uh, when I was barely getting into, when I was turning 21 and stuff, they were one of the bands I saw, Birds, because Brian used to work there. And um, shout out to Brian Banks from Anodyne Door Guy. But um, <laughs> he used to book a lot of the bands that I used to love. They used to play there, and he would let me in free sometimes. So, because I'd be driving up from Mountain Air by myself, and just he'd be like, "Oh, you're by yourself again?" I'm like, "Yeah, I drove, I drove up from Mountain Air." He's like, "Cool, come on in." So, awesome. so that was really cool, and uh, it was nice. A lot of the door guys were were, were were like really nice to me and stuff, and that always, that was always cool. Because uh, they weren't always nice to people. Nice. <laughs> well, the people that used to mess around. Any <laughs> any current bands that you want to share with folks? Oh yeah, um, let's see. I, um, Red Mesa is about to release a new album here this year. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, um, we have this gold nugget vinyl that's amazing and it matches the artwork. It's uh, watch, I'll show you here in a little bit. And um, I have a new band called Scroll with Mr. Brian Banks, uh, my ex bandmate from Black Maria, and Eric from uh, from uh, his former band Heave, and then um, Power Toke. With Joe Tapia, he's legend of the scene. He played with Noisier, and um, 
I played with um, Torture Victim, The Ground Beneath. Um, so many bands, Jesus. <laughs> Probably like over 30 bands since I've been out with Kirky for 25 years. That's awesome. <laughs> well, new album, we'll be looking for it. I'm oh, sure yeah. We'll have a listening party with Red Definitely. Mace's new album this year. That would be Everybody amazing. Check it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, 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 it's awesome. It's, it's different. It's, 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 in, it, it, it's like the purgatory between rock and roll and metal. It's like just right there. It's perfect. The perfect nice. mix. So awesome. I'm excited. Well, thanks so much. We'll look forward to it. Yeah, thank and, you, guys. Uh, yeah, keep bringing all that musical joy to the city. Awesome, thank man. You, man. Thank you for always uh, going to shows, too, and announcing bands. I know people love that, love seeing it, and the bands love seeing that. I'm sure they get a kick out of that, and they just love it, because a lot of your influences are a lot of mine, like uh, Sepultura, my mm -hmm. favorite band. So, nice, uh, same here. So, <laughs> Max, that's for you. Yeah, Matt, that's for Max. <laughs> no, but, it, you know, it's always cool to see you, t you uh, taking pictures with them and like talking to them. So that's been that, amazing. That's, that's Kaius awesome. too. That's why I had oh, Kaius, this we were yeah. th this show together. We have the same hoodie. This was like <laughs> yeah. 15 years ago, maybe even yeah. 20 years ago. That was and that was even like the reunion tour, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I tried to sneak into Burt's when they were there. I was 14 and I couldn't, they, you know, I just looked too young. They were like, forget it, dude. <laughs> yeah. And I still remember that. Like I'm still mad. I never got to see them in Burt's. Yeah. So anyway, cool. Uh, right on. Well, we got to wrap it up. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Appreciate thanks again it. for having Roman. me. Appreciate it. We appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, thanks for always supporting the scene. And here we go. You got Another it. Another year. <laughs> Super wonderful to talk music with everyone in Albuquerque. And, uh, you know, just for fun, if you want to see hilarious videos that no one notices, check out hashtag Metal Mayor. And you'll see some live show footage. But uh, listen, we want to really just thank you for listening uh, today, Albuquerque. And remember, it takes all of us to fulfill the promise of our city that we call home. So we're going to see you again next time on 1ABQ and you. Be sure and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us at hashtag 1ABQ and you. If you'd like to share your own ABQ observations, experiences, or topic suggestions, reach out to us. You've been listening to 1ABQNU.